so excited to check out Janet Gunn's office today. Not only because I haven't seen it yet, but it's this New Orleans style architecture in the heart of Beverly Hills, so rare, and also speaks to Janet's Southern girl. Come on in and check it out. Today with Psychotecture, as we talk about how design psychology can improve the way we live in our interior world and our exterior world, I'm here to visit Janet Gunn's office as we focus on creativity and productivity in the workplace. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce lifestyle guru, influencer Janet Gunn. Ah, thank you, Rachel. Thank you. Um, first of all, thank you so much for asking me to be a part of your interviews. Um, I love what you're doing and it actually, it just, it's very, um, uh, it's just refreshing to know that there's someone like you who brings light into the office space, into a, whether it's at, at home or, or out of your home, um, just how to be productive, how to be creative. And what I realized is that having this space now has definitely moved me in a direction that I needed to go after being, uh, after working in the house for such a long time. And let me hit, so what Janet has done in this space, we, as she referred to it as a kind of an empty shell, she has used design psychological, whether she knew it or not, principles of everything from her carpeting, her artwork, to objet de art, to lighting, to create this productive creative space for a collaboration in what you're doing in the beauty and health and wellness influencing world. So what she speaks to in her work is really embodied in the elements of her space and it, and it reverberates. Thank you. I think that was maybe perfectly put. <laughs> okay, so now with Psychotexture, I wanted to highlight some design psychological principles of biophilia. In Janet's office, we see beautiful flowers that she brings in every day, fresh, um, her love of nature, as well as her design choices of biophilia. Can you please speak to a few of them? Yes, well, I love definitely the fresh flowers. That is, uh, yes, that, they're here on my desk all the time. And, and it's very important. And I also have this beautiful, these beautiful velvet uh, floral pillows. And they're floral. Yes, yes, they have the roses on top. It's again, it's flowers. So I have nature on top of the the nature, and just creating this softness around um, the space. It is so soft and serene because let me just highlight the carpeting is mimicking the ocean. Mm. And yeah. that is like this light reflective pool, shadow and light that you, I think, told me that you have this love of Hawaii yes. and that comes the out water. in this design choice. And the creativity, the flow, the yes. movement, yes. right? So water's always moving, the ocean floor is always changing and, and unpredictable too. Right, I'm and that speaks to creativity. She's bringing in elements of water and movement and let me highlight another design principle that you speak to and that you embrace strongly is texture. Yes. The sensory of texture really can enhance our well-being in our workspace. So we have a velvet soft mm -hmm. texture, which is beautifully, might I add, exquisitely juxtaposed color-wise with yeah. the pink and the blue. So in the next segment of Psychotexture, we're going to focus from the floor of the ocean and how that's represented in Janet's artwork. Right. Moving on to artwork, which is really exciting. It not only expresses who we are and our personality, but it's a safe place to explore our, our unconscious. And each of these pictures, the five that Janet has selected on her wall, expresses who she is. And I'd love to hear a little bit about Janet. Tell me about the geisha. Okay, so I captured this beautiful geisha, 2019. She was walking out. First of all, they're very hard to catch. Really hard. There's photographers that just wait outside, waiting and hoping to see one. And literally, I waited for about 15 minutes and there she comes out of her home into the back of the car and she whisked away. So this was in the moment, caught on my iPhone, the very first frame that I got. And so it just says a lot of meaning to me. And I read Memoirs of the Geisha many years ago. I saw the movie and uh, I just felt very fortunate to capture her. Right. <laughs> and moving down to the orange hat, I really want to see what's 
lying underneath this one. Right. It, it just makes you happy when you look at it. I saw her at a restaurant, Sadell's in Dallas, and she made me so happy. And so I went on a hunt for this artist, and thanks to a follower, um, she let me know where I could purchase this beautiful je ne sais quoi. Um, I feel like there's a wonderful personality living under that very large hat. That is also living in Janet, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Moving next to this gorgeous ballerina, Janet, tell us about this. Well, this is Renee Romero Schuler, who I also found via Instagram. And um, it, to me, she's a ballerina. Uh, that she did, That's not really who the artist probably meant her to be. Um, but that's what she is to me. And this is when I was younger, uh, I would be off stage waiting for my entrance, you know, when I was little. And I, there, everything about this beautiful uh, figure reminded me of such a, an incredible happy time in my life. And this artist definitely is, she just gave me chill bumps whenever I first saw it. So these last pieces, Scandal. Tell <laughs> us about Scandal and you. Oh my God. I, okay, so there's definitely a part of me I feel like that might live in, in this, uh, this woman right here. This is a magazine cover, the, one of the very first ones where a woman was in her brassiere and underwear. So it was very scandalous in the, night, in the late 1950s. And I just love it. I just, I love that that um, it's just exciting and makes you feel a little rebellious, you know, and excited. Yeah, I and, like I, that. and I think that is a part of Janet's personality is the rebellion, yeah. the inner rebellion, and to get excited in your office space, it gives that like yes. absolute splash and yeah. it's a part of you, it's That's that right. fire in you. And maybe one day I'll run around in my bra and underwear. <laughs> we'll just see, and then I'll be a magazine. Then you'll be really scandalous. <laughs> And finally, which I think bookends a lot of the design psychology and water and history of place of how it connects in your own world is your trips to Hawaii. Yeah. Tell us about this gorgeous little Maui piece. Oh, it's just so beautiful. This is an artist, Susan Wickstrand, who I know who paints beautiful in a, uh, Aloha themed uh, paintings. And I know it's it's tiny, but there are three people in this painting, which to me represents uh, my husband, myself, and, and our son. And we love to go to Hawaii. Anything with that aloha uh, spirit is, uh, it's very important to us as a family. Um, these puka shells, of course, I got there whenever I was in Hawaii. And I look at this and that literally, it just sums it all up, you know? And to have the aloha spirit underneath mm -hmm. the, the scandalous red hot rebellion, <laughs> it's really beautifully <laughs> juxtaposed. Well, and again, it's movement, it's tranquil, it's beautiful, it's peaceful. Thank you for joining us today at Janet Gunn's office. I hope you learned about psychotecture and some techniques and tips to increase your productivity and creativity. Please visit my site at psychotecture.com and I'd love people to know where to find you, Janet. Well, first of all, thank you so much. This is really a pleasure. Um, I learned, I've learned a lot uh, about psychotecture from you, and I appreciate that. It's been a real pleasure. Um, thank you for watching uh, Janet Gunn, Grateful Gardenia. That is my Instagram account, and my website is gratefulgardenia.com. And thank you. Thank you. I love diving into this whole psychotecture world with you. Oh, it was a collaboration. I learned so much about you, and I learned more about my business through going to your office. I love it. Thank you. Thank you.